you're gonna go to hell if you do not give your life to Christ. No, that is not how you spread the gospel of Jesus. That is not how you win souls to Christ. That is not how you spread the love of God. It's a way to do it, bruh. As you can see, this comment asks, you know, do a video on how to spread the gospel of Jesus. But I'm gonna tell you my way. Everybody does it a little different. But, you know, spreading the gospel of Jesus is spreading his love, you know, speaking about Jesus, basically like, you know, telling a person, you're not forcing. A lot of people, they make the mistake of forcing somebody to believe God, forcing somebody to, you know, give their life to Christ. You can't force anybody because then it becomes proselytizing, forcing your beliefs. You don't want a person to believe based off of fear. Oh, I'm going to go to hell. So I have to believe in this God. You don't want to, because then is it really belief? No, it's not. They're just trying to do something because they're scared. Or you don't want a person, you feel them saying, to run further away. If you tell a person about God and how Jesus died on the cross and they reject and they do not want to hear it, and you continue to tell them you're now proselytizing, you're now forcing the gospel of Jesus. You get what I'm saying? We have freedom of speech in the United States of America. However, you cannot force a person. If they walk away, you do not need to chase them. You do not need to tell them they're going to go to hell. You do not need to tell them that, you know, you don't need to do all of that extra stuff. Spreading the gospel is love. The Bible tells us that love covers the multitude of sin. I'm going to put the Bible verse right on the screen. Love comes on the multitude of sin. You know, and he said, through loving kindness have I drawn thee. It's the love that touches the heart of that soul. It's the love that pierces that person. You feel what I'm saying? For example... I may be playing football or I may be at the store. I may be at GameStop because I really like video games. And I may be buying a new gaming headset or buying a PSN card for my PlayStation. Boom, I see another kid in there. You know, another kid, I don't know why I said that because I'm not a kid, but I see another person in there. And I'm like, you know, I see him and I'm like, yo, bro, like, you like that game too? So do I. Da -da 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 -da. And we chopping it up. We talking and he like, yo, bro, like, what's your gamer tag? Da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, yo, bro, this is my gamer tag. Da -da -da -da. And we should play sometimes. Boom, 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 boom. We're having a conversation. It's not me just forcing it and just throwing Jesus. Yo, bro, you believe in God? No, that's not how you do that. It makes people very uncomfortable. And it runs them away what you do is reel that person in through love through love and after a while you talk to that person and you slip it in like yo bro like what's your thoughts on jesus man like since we're we're, we're becoming friends like i just want to know what's your thoughts like like have you ever been to church it's a way to do it without forcing you invite you get what i'm saying god in and if they reject do not force do not keep going on and on but if you do the thing the right way if you talk to them like you can go who playing basketball with an individual then you start talking to that person and then you get what i'm saying you may mention god mention jesus not in a way throwing shots at them and don't make it seem as though you're feeling as though you're better than them because a lot of people they feel intimidated because they feel as though christians think that they feel as though we as christians think we're better than the rest and we're not we're sinners just like the next man we're just striving to live holy and acceptable in the sight of jesus christ you know, it's a way to pretty much do it. I had a friend. Um, he's my best friend. He now stays in New York. I still stay in Texas. And this friend, um, we would, I met him at school in seventh grade. We would play. We still talk to this day sometimes. We would play the video game online. We would go to school. We would walk to school. We would talk with each other about Fortnite. We were talking everything. And one day I just ended up mentioning it. I ended up mentioning, yo, bro, <clears throat> Like, you think if you die, you know, you're going to go to heaven or you think you're going to go to hell. And we began to talk about a deep discussion. He began to tell me certain things. I began to tell him certain things. And now he's saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost because it took time. And I invited the spirit of God to come in and I spread. I presented him the gospel of Jesus. You feel what I'm saying? I presented it. I did not force him. I was just his friend and I presented it. It's just kind of like talking about uh, a certain burger you like telling things telling like how you like certain things you talking to a certain female then you mention this is my favorite restaurant it's kind of like that you mention god a person asks you who are you like describe yourself you can mention i'm a man of god i'm a woman of god and i do this i do this and i do that then they drop they draw curiosity then you're open to basically tell them about the gospel of jesus but you do not ever want to force and however if you are trying to spread the gospel and you tell somebody about god you tell somebody about jesus bruh if they don't want to hear it bro whether you want them to i know it may be your family it may be a friend you may really care about them you do not want them to go to he hell you want them to go to heaven but you cannot force them thumbnail you cannot force them 
to basically give their life to Christ. My mama did that to me. She tried to force me. My mama would beat us for not reading the word of God. She would force us to pray. She would force us to stay up in church. We would be at church all day long, bro. I'll be falling asleep in church because I had school. Bro, my mama made us do that. She made us. And it drew me further and further away from God, bro. Then I had to come back to God myself. And I had an encounter in my own experience myself. So it wasn't like a... You get what I'm saying? So, oh, somebody made me do this type of thing. You do not want to force anybody. Nobody should want to get into God because of fear, just because you told them they're going to go to hell. They should want to know God because they, they should want to go to heaven and they should love God because of what he did. He died on the cross. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for their sins. He made a big sacrifice for God's love, love, love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on them shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You should not only try to love him out of fear, because then at that day, at the end of the day, do you really love him or are you only doing this because you're scared? You're only doing this because you don't want to go to hell because of what another person said. You get what I'm saying? You want to find God on your own. When we spread the gospel, when we teach about the word of God, it's for you. It's for you to be like, hey, hmm, you know, that sounds pretty good. That's like me advertising a cheeseburger that I tried at McDonald's. Yo, bro, this cheeseburger is pretty good. Da -da 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 -da. I'm not forcing you. Go get your $3 and go buy you this burger. No, I'm simply telling you my experience and how juicy the bu bur burger was and how soft the bun was and how the ketchup just dripped. Ooh, wee. You feel what I'm saying? I'm advertising it. And it's your choice whether you want to accept or reject. You can say, no, that burger is nasty. It doesn't sound good. Or you can say, hmm. You know what? I might just try that cheeseburger. It sounds real good. This is how it is spreading the gospel. You know, the preacher that's that's spreading it, they release the seed. They're trying to reach the person listening, not forcing them, trying to condemn them and make them feel bad. You get what I'm saying? And however, you also do not want to talk about what you do not know. If you don't know what you're preaching about, don't spread the gospel if you don't know anything. You don't want to say the wrong thing because one wrong word you say could lead a person to hell. Don't just tell a person, you get what I'm saying, something you don't know about. This is why I tell people, read your word. You can't just spread the Bible. You can't just read one chapter a day and expect to spread the gospel. You don't know it because you're not spending enough time with God. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You're not filled. You get what I'm saying? You have to learn. That's like me trying to teach Chinese and I don't know Chinese. How can I tell another person how to speak Chinese if I don't even know Chinese myself? I have not learned how to speak Chinese myself, so I can't teach the next man how to speak Chinese. Or that's like me trying to cook, to teach another person how to cook, and I don't know how to cook. You have to know exactly what you're talking about. If you want to spread the gospel, get closer to God. Build a relationship. Learn more about Jesus so you can know what you're talking about. If you made it to this part of the video, I appreciate the love and support. Thumbnail. I appreciate the love and support. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on my notification bell so you'll not miss an upload. Go check out my TikTok. We're almost at 70,000 followers. Glory to Jesus. Comment down below what you think in Jesus' name.